Now, if we revive these ideals, if we remember who we are, then we can actually stand up with a spine to the actual threats we face on the global stage. And the top of that list is communist China. Right? That is the real threat, not the one we face in Ukraine, because that is a non-existent threat to the United States. The real threat we face is from communist China. So what I'm going to share with you all tonight is how we're going to end that war in Ukraine without spending another dime and shift our focus to actually declaring independence from our real enemy. Anybody here know, what is, thank you, I appreciate that, what is the number one threat that we face today, a treaty between two countries? Tell me who they are. I love this audience. I love New Hampshire. It is the alliance between Russia and China that is the number one threat we have ever faced in the last, since World War II. That is the biggest threat this country has faced. In 2001, the two countries entered a treaty. They said they would each back the other if either was attacked militarily. We were actually turning our attention to that before the two planes hit the Twin Towers on 9-11. Now what happened last year, those two countries took it to the next level. They called it a no-limits partnership between China and Russia. Now, United States, we're way ahead of both of them. But actually, if you look at combining those two countries, now we have a problem. Geographic landmass, supersonic missiles, hypersonic missiles, super EMP weapons, economy. Now we're getting serious. So what I think we have an opportunity to do is not just end the Ukraine war. And believe me, I have long been in the camp before it was popular of saying that I would not spend another dime of American money on a war that does not affect our interests. I appreciate that, not another dime. And I will not apologize for that. But we can actually go even further, and I'm laying out for you what I'm gonna be talking about for the next week. We're doing it first here tonight. Laying out how we actually advance our top goal. Here's the deal that I'm gonna do with Vladimir Putin. Now those are words that the media does not wanna hear. But I'm going to say it again. Here's the deal that we can do with Putin is that we will stop providing aid to Ukraine. We will freeze the current lines of control. That means he gets the Donbass region. It means he gets the Crimea. And we will make a permanent commitment to tell Ukraine that you will not be admitted to NATO, not now, not ever. Those are big concessions to Russia. But we have a big ask in return that you will exit your treaty with China. It's like what Nixon did to Mao in 1972. That's what we have a chance to do now, except Putin is the new Mao. We turn the world order then upside down, where China now can't go for Taiwan because Russia doesn't have their back anymore. That's what it means to actually think about what advances American interests. Right now, you'll hear them tell you, Keep sending weapons to Ukraine. Why? We agreed in 1994 that we would respect Ukraine's sovereignty. Well, guess what? We have more than fulfilled that obligation. $200 billion in aid. That's 20 times, that's actually close to 40 times Ukraine's own annual military budget. I'm sorry, we've fulfilled our obligations. Now the question is, how do we actually advance American interests? And you drive, thank you, you drive that wedge between Russia and China, now we've actually accomplished something. And this is where I want us to go. What are we running to as a movement? How do we actually advance the interests of this country? You do that, then you can declare, we can declare independence from China. Then we have the standing to tell China that we're gonna hold you accountable for unleashing hell on the world with the COVID-19 pandemic using every financial lever we have available. That if you're affiliated with the CCP, you will not buy land in this country. You will not donate to universities in this country. We're declaring independence from you. We're done with it. In fact, I would go even further. I would say that we will ban most US businesses 
from doing business in China until the CCP either falls or reforms its behaviors. That's what it means to actually declare independence and stand up with a spine. But thank you, I appreciate that. But here's the truth. Xi Jinping, I'll tell you, I've been an exchange student in China. I've actually done business in China, my first company. I made the mistake of opening a branch in China. When I started my second business, Strive, I said, hell no, we are not opening a branch in China because I do not want the boot of the CCP on my neck as I'm serving American clients. But, but what I'm telling you, this isn't made up. Okay, what China sees, what Xi Jinping thinks, here's what he's telling us. You can't declare independence from me because you are addicted to me. You're addicted to the fentanyl that I'm pumping across your southern border and now your northern border too. You're addicted to fentanyl. You're addicted to the digital fentanyl that I'm pumping into your kids' phones through TikTok and whatever else we send them. You're addicted to the financial fentanyl in the form of the national debt that we are funding. So you just try me and see if you can declare independence. You don't have it in you because you are addicted to me. That is the bluff that Xi Jinping thinks he's calling on us. And so the real question, even for our foreign policy, it isn't even about them. It's about us. Take a long, hard look in the mirror and let's ask ourselves, do we actually have it in us to make the trade-offs, to stand with the spine? Yes, to make a short-run sacrifice to declare independence from our enemy. I think we do. I think we will. But that isn't up to him, that is up to us in this country.